Hello, welcome pen friends. I'm filming this on January 31st, 2023, but this is going to be Chris's inked pens for January 2024. I've already picked my eight pens and my eight inks and I've got the tiles here. So we're just going to dive right into my ink journal here in a minute after I talk about the pens real briefly. And I'll write with each one of them and then we'll, we'll try going to the library to talk because it's a little bit busy over here in my office. <laughs> it's, a, it's cat central. But anyway, um, this is was my birth, uh, birthday Christmas present actually. This is a stack and store pen and ink tray from Galen Leather. And it's got this little cover that's, I think this is like plexiglass or something, but it's really nice because it keeps the dust out of your pens. It keeps the cats out of your pens. And also, like, the one I had made, which is still good, you know, um, it isn't as deep of a tray, and they kind of bump together. The, the larger pens don't quite make it. So I'm really excited about this. I, I mean, I, I really like it. And it's going to be where my letter writing pens stay. So, you know, um, let's see, out of these, I don't, I think the only one that'll depart probably for um, a, a, another journal will be th this one. But the rest of these are kind of, uh, the, the nibs and the inks are all geared toward letter writing, which is, and journaling, which is what I'm going to be doing a lot of in January. So the first pen is the, uh, my birthday pen, the Hongdian N23, uh, Year of the Rabbit. And it's got that interesting blade nib on it. And, you know, I started using it as soon as I got it in December, but it, it, it deserves its whole month, you know, of, of, uh, writing and also, um, you know, we'll have the progress report with it and everything, which I enjoy. So, okay, then next up is the little Moon Man P136. And I didn't, I didn't know I was going to like this as much as I do. Um, it's a pen friend gift from pen friend MS. It has a medium nib on it and it's a piston filler. And wow, spoiler alert, it's a smooth writer. And I did not expect it to be so like, immediately for me to like it that much. I don't know why why not, but I just didn't realize. So anyway, next up is the Twisby Eco T, and I think it's Rosso. I should have checked that beforehand. Um, and I got a broad nib on it, and I'm really glad I did. You'll see when we work with the, the ink why I like it so much. But okay, then next up is um, uh, Opus 88 Demonstrator, which is a stylo and styles, um, no, stylo and style uh, exclusive and it's got a broad nib on it too. Uh, this, this is really a, one of my favorite pens and, and I uh, whenever I think green or teal I'm, I'm looking for that pen. So. <laughs> okay then next up is one I haven't written with in a while and I wanted to you know, pick kind of a safe ink for it that wouldn't stain it, but I also wanted just to write with it again. It's got a gold nib. It's the uh, Platinum Century, a uh, 3776 Century Nice with a broad nib, which kind of, to me, writes more like a medium, but it's writing really nice with the ink I chose. So I think, I think it was a good ink matchup. Okay, and then next up is, I, ca I can't not have this inked up right now. I'm kind of obsessed with this Banu Euphoria in the pink um, Gaiva, and it's got a broad nib, and I went for kind of a pinky ink this time instead of the green, uh, so I'm, I'm really kind of excited about that, too. <laughs> you could pick up on silver or pink or magenta or green or teal or whatever you want, but, <clears throat> but this time I picked up on the pink for it. So next up is, uh, Lamy All-Star I think this is graphite, and it is a, I've put a broad nib on it, and it's a pen friend gift from a different pen friend MS, and, and it's just really, um, I, I thought, wait, I haven't written with that yet? How come? So uh, I have an old favorite ink in it, and we're going to see how that goes. Okay, then next up is uh, my favorite of my Caveco Sports, uh, even more favorite than the brass, and I do have an AL, and this is still my, my favorite one. I don't know for sure if it's the ink or, I mean, the, the nib, meaning that way the ink kind of presents so nice. Um, I've got nice double broad nibs on some of those others, so it could just be this is very sentimental. This was my Willie um, 
memorial gift pen from pen friend B. I, I mess up her last initials, so I'm just going to say B. And, and, and she knows who she is. So, and, uh, Anyway, we'll see what the ink is that I have in there. And, and I just, I reach for this so much, which is, seems kind of strange because I don't for the other Caveco sports. But anyway, that's just one of those things you notice sometimes when you're getting ready to <laughs> decide what to ink up with. I, I mean, I automatically grabbed a different one thinking I hadn't given it airtime. And then I told myself, no, I want what I want for January. Um, I had a lot of stress here the end of December, the very last five days. And uh, so I want to know that my pens are going to write. They're going to write the way I want them to. <laughs> so I didn't do a lot of experimenting. So let's get right into the ink journal and we'll pull the tile for each one and we'll write with each one of these. Okay, hopefully you'll be able to see everything. Um, so first up, the Hongdian N23 with that blade nib. It just puts down so much ink. It's 12 <laughs> okay, talking clock. I can't escape the talking clock. Um, and it has a a uh, more narrow line width on the downstrokes and a more wider on the side to side. And it's really a unique one. So here it is. Hong Din. I was not sure if I'd like this nib. I knew I was going to like the pen because it's really stunning. But uh, I do, I really do like this. Uh, let's see, I'm going to put Year of the Rabbit. Why do I feel like I'm going? No, I guess I'm not going off camera with it. Uh, good. <laughs> okay, so I, I believe it's like blade is how they call it. And then it's Sailor, 50 States, Texas, which I was gifted a little bottle of this. So I am no longer out and I'm so excited about that. That is just so cool. You know who you are and thank you very much. Um, I'm going to make a little smear with that because just to show um, what we get. And yeah, that's, this is really nice. And, and I, because I have big writing anyway, I like it for my letter writing. Um, it's almost, but not quite like a food aid nib. It just, it's different though. Um, I think you get more line variation and I just love 50 States, Texas. So, okay, next up is um, the Moonman P136 with a medium nib and Waterman Serenity Blue. <clears throat> and I just keep, you know, I've had these inked up a couple days because I knew if I didn't get super organized, this wasn't going to happen. And I keep coming back to the pen tray to get this one um, for my regular journal because it writes so smoothly and it's like got a really, really generous medium nib right out of the box. It makes me almost wonder if my pen friend, like, did something to the nib, but I don't think so because the letter indicated, I hope you get a good one, a good nib, in other words. So, so I don't think so. I think this is how it came. Um, so this is Moon Man. Um, I know they're also calling it Mahon, but this still is branded Moon Man. So I'm going to go with that because that's what the pen says. Uh, P136. Whoops, I'm writing on top of something else here. Um, Medium nib. Oh, I, I needed to look up the color. Of course it's blue, but I'm not sure if it has a, you know, navy blue or dark blue or something. I'm not sure about that. And this is Waterman Serenity Blue. I kept thinking, is it this ink or is it the nib? Or Because I don't always have the greatest luck with... Well, no, the Moon Man nibs are not, I mean, the Gen Hao nibs give me more problems than Moon Man ones. So, yeah, I do actually have better um, experiences with uh, Moon Man nibs. But, but this was extraordinary because a lot of times it'll be a fine nib or an extra fine. This is a medium. And then I think the combination of, the, uh, of this beautiful ink that flows really well. And, wow, I, I can see myself just continuing to fill this up the way I do the little... Jin Hao 148 with cr uh, cross black, you know, like to have around to write with all the time. It's just, and that surprises me. Um, it's, you know, a piston filler and everything. So that's really cool. Okay, so next up is um, the new uh, Twisby Eco T, 
um, it has the triangle versus the more, you know, it's not the regular eco, it's the T. And it's a Rosso, and I put in Pilot Orochizuku Momiji, which is a beautiful red, which also fools you a little because, you know, it, it draws up pink. And uh, it's just gorgeous. And with this uh, broad nib, oh, I got a good one, <laughs> a good one on this one. Um, usually do on the Twisbees. Um, a few times I complained that the Twisby nib broad were not broad enough, but okay, Eco T broad, Rosso. Okay, um, whoops, I put it there. And then Pilot, Roshizuku, Momiji. Beautiful, beautiful red ink. Whoops. I probably got red already. I mean, uh, blue on there too, darn it. I try to use a different finger each time so I don't cross-contaminate um, my inks, but that's what happens sometimes. Beautiful. It's got so much flow, and it's gorgeous. And I already wrote one letter. <laughs> one letter with, with these new ones. Um, all eight of them, so the person could see what I was writing with. Okay, so next up is that Opus 88 demonstrator with... Emerald of Shavor. I now have a bottle of this thanks to a, a generous anonymous person who gifted me a um, um, apple bomb. Apple bomb. I'm trying to, you know, pronounce some things right. Gift certificate. Uh, a couple of months back, I think it was like in September. So this is gorgeous, and I have always kind of wanted a bottle, even though. I wasn't too sure, but now I'm sure. Um, this may be green, and I'm putting a teal ink in it, but oh, it's it's just, oh my gosh, the flow. I already have it open, the uh, ink, um, oh, the thing that keeps the ink flowing. Gosh, I can't think of what I'm trying to say today, but when we get back to the library, we'll, there's a couple reasons for that. <laughs> okay, um, Opus 88 demonstrator. I, I should probably just put this stylo and style. Broad nib. J. Arbonne. Emerald of Shavor. And if you use um, CVS caliber paper, this is great on it. It flows really good on it and you can lift it with a water brush and make amazing, uh, you know, highlights and so on. Okay, so let's see. Okay, well that went right off the page, but that's okay. You get the idea. It's nice and juicy. That's a generous broad nib to begin with and it's an ink tank. So I can, I can go with this probably well, if I'm really right with it a lot, I'll use it fast enough, you know, not to have to clean it out before it runs out because it is a shimmer ink, but these are well behaved, the J. Arbonne, I believe. I've never had any problems with those. Okay, then next up, um, went for kind of a cheerful purple to put into the Platinum 3776 um, Century Nice. I went with Mont Blanc's, Mont Blanc, <laughs> I guess I'll just quit trying. Psychedelic purple, and it's gorgeous. It's my primary colorway for purple is that just neon purple, bright purple. So um, let's see, and, and this seems like it helps the nib. You know, the platinum broad nibs are not as broad. I, I probably should have a double broad, um, given what I like to write with, but it, it, it works real good um, with this ink. It's nice, so platinum. 3776 Century Nice Broad Nib and Mont Blanc. I know you're supposed to say it different. I just don't, I can't do it, I guess. Psych Psychedelic Purple. It's actually got more to it. It's the Beatles. Um, let me add that in there. The Beatles. I love the box. And now that I've rearranged my desk, I've got like room to have the box up here. I, I love these boxes. It, the, it pulls out and then the, the bottle sits in a nice little nest and it's just really cool. I know I'll keep this after the bottle's empty. So the bottle will be, you know, could be repurposed or whatever. Um, 
Okay, so let's do our little test. Yeah, I mean, it's juicy, but you can tell that it's not the same as some of the other broad nibs. But it's good. It's, it's really, really pretty. It puts down plenty of ink. Okay, and then next up, here we go with the with this new to me uh, Benu um, Euphoria pink Gaiva that was um, donated to me in a box of pens with 30 pens from someone who would like to remain anonymous and was wanting a good home for pens they were downsizing. So uh, I'm just thrilled. I mean, that's just amazing. Um, and I have now put in it my birthday ink, Van Diemen's Maryland. It's, it's a shimmer ink. And it is a special shimmer ink to me because it's only the second shimmer ink I've ever felt was like living up to what I wanted or expected out of a shimmer ink, which was I was getting to see it in each um, letter uh, of, <laughs> of each word. I guess I have kind of a high standard there. But I mean, that's kind of what I would like is to see a little bit of shimmer in each uh, presentation. And uh, this, it flows really good in this generous uh, number six broad nib, too. So this is Bennu Euphoria. Um, let's see, I guess I better specify, even though I only have the, the one now. Um, two came in that box, but the colorway was perfect for a very close longtime supporter and friend, pen friend of this channel. So I, I did, like... I sent that pen to another great home because I thought having two and this was my color and the other was her color. So I'm completely losing my train of thought. Pink. Uh, Gava. Broad nib. Van Diemen's. It was so cool because this was out of stock at uh, Van Ness and then it came back in stock and I was able to get it. It was just like... A lot of times when things come back in stock, there's no more pen money in the pen, <laughs> in the pen uh, account. But there was, and I ordered just the, it, and it came right before my birthday. So it was just so, so cool. Marilyn. It's a little 30 mil bottle, and, it, and it's really, really neat. It was pen friend Marilyn that I uh, saw how it wrote, because I was looking at um, the page of the letter, <clears throat> that he wrote and it was just completely all glittery and you know like it was like wow that's a real shimmer ink <laughs> it like actually performs you know so I at the time wanted to get it and it wasn't available so okay so next up is this Lamy all-star graphite I think it's graphite because the other one is is silver and it's something else it's the the one that I had purchased was different and I put Diamine Aqua Lagoon because I was looking for a happy kind of turquoise or bright blue and um, this one came to mind as a very old favorite uh, you know never never have I stopped loving this ink so this is Lamy All Star Graphite from Penfriend MS with a broad Lamy nib and Diamine Aqua Lagoon. I just love it. It, um, let's see. Yeah, it's nice and juicy, and it's going to be wonderful. Whoops. <laughs> I made it look like a Z there, but I think we know what it is. Okay, and then um, last but not least is the, uh, the little Caveco Sport Mellow Blue. I don't even think I said that before. This is The colorway is Mellow Blue. And it's a double broad nib. And I have Diamine Early Dusk from the Ink Vent. It is the one standout for me. Whoops, we've got some shimmer from somebody else on it. Oh, dear. I hope the ones that went to Matt didn't do that, too. I tried to be real careful with that set, but uh, oh, dear. <laughs> I could see that. Uh, let's see. And I like to put it so I can see the Caveco part. Um, I can see that it got shimmer on it. But anyway. I'm not surprised it was probably right next to Van Diemen's Maryland or something. So this is pen eight <clears throat> and <clears throat> excuse me, an ink eight. Caveco Sport <clears throat> Mellow Blue 
double broad. That's my nib in Quebecos. Um, I, I, I won't even look at anything else <clears throat> for the Caveco Sport. Okay, dye mine. Early dusk. Um, I really like this ink because it, it's, you know, it's got that complexity. It's kind of not too bright, not too dark, and it's got shading. And I just really, really kind of like, like it. And I'd like to get a little more experience with it. Let's see. Oh, I got glitter all over my hands too. Anyway, it's got a nice juicy nib on it and uh, yet I can still see shading and I enjoy it very much. So, let me fix the camera setup. There, so <clears throat> these are my journaling and letter writing pens for the month. I still have a few um, left over where I haven't completely finished the ink and another few pens. But what I like to do is um, start off with my letters with these, but there are some of my people that I write to that probably want to see some of the ink vent uh, inks. So I say I kept a couple of them inked and, and I'll just be monitoring closely for, you know, when I need to clean them for sure, when they either run out or, or they're no longer performing right. <clears throat> but there's only a couple of those. And the other thing I didn't take time for was I do have to kind of look at my bullet journal pen, which it has, is in the Gen Hao 248, I think it is, the little one, and it's got cross black. And I've also got a little Pilot Prera in my um, <laughs> total blank. The other one, the week, the weeks, the Hobonichi weeks, and that's almost out of ink. So I'm going to kind of look at those probably tomorrow and see: Do I want to refill and just keep going, or do I want new? new to me um, fountain pens for those. I'm looking for, you know, I've got, I, I'm not, I shouldn't say looking for, I've got uh, extra fine nibs that I'm still experimenting with. So I may go back into that, that uh, Sailor 1911, that, that beautiful cocktail, the blue one, and put cross black in that one for, for one of my planners. And then, but I thought, no, I'm not going to hold up the video over that because this, this is the primary, um, you know, uh, combinations for the month that we'll do a progress report on these and we might have another one. <laughs> we might have more than one more, but we're starting with eight, eight inks and eight pens. And they're, they're happy colors for the most part. Um, I'm thinking that these will be cheerful and, and it's, it's necessary because January can be a little bit, um, skies can be a little bit dull in Texas, but we also get some sunshine. So we'll just go from here. I think right now we'll move over to the library. I, I do have it set up today so I can talk to you over there and not disturb Manuel and the cats quite as much. But <laughs> So we'll meet over there. Well, Toby's found a place and we'll, we'll work on that, but he's very comfortable. Well, that was just a little bit of an Easter egg. I couldn't, uh, <laughs> I couldn't bypass. Um, if, if it was me I, I, and just me, uh, my cats would be absolutely everywhere and there probably wouldn't be any uh, limitations, but we generally don't have that. We don't have the cats on the table, but he is having trouble as far as like the, the climbers in the living room. One is kind of dominated by Princess and the other one by Coco. So until I get another one, um, and I do have another window. In fact, I have two two other window options where it's really like the morning sun will come in and everything. <laughs> Until I get that for him, I don't have the heart to be, you know, not letting him. Because he needs to be up a little higher so that he doesn't feel intimidated by the others or, or so that he can also be up higher and not get surprised. So we're, we're I mean, it's a work in progress, though, and everybody's OK right now So with it, you know. So because I have a window in this library room where um, I have to close the blinds at night so that it doesn't, you know, show all the way through down through the into the bathroom or whatever. But then I do that. But uh, I could rearrange just a little and put a climber there. That would be kind of nice. And, you know, we have ways of pinning the curtains so they can still see out at night, too, because there's quite a bit of light. Uh, from uh, street lights and neighbor lights and all that. So I guess we're I guess we're completely off of pens and into cats now. <laughs> so, but you know, 
I don't have any notes today because it's been so busy that I, I just said, no, I'm, I'm going to, once I do Chris's ink pens and, and show you the, the writing samples, then I'm just going to talk and people don't have to stay for that or they can if they want to, of course, you know. But it's going really well with the cats. Um, out of like the past three weeks, there's only been two nights where Toby didn't come back inside at night. So that's amazing considering that he's been on his own for quite a while since those people that had him that were renting moved. He's been on his own. And so he did have a uh, little, you know, assistance and sheltering from uh, the other lady down the street that I have been talking to. And he knows her kids who they're all, they're kind of grown up now. They're in, I think the youngest is in high school. So he knew about beds and people being kind and being fed and everything. But they got a new kitten, which I think is the reason why Toby moved here or, you know, adopted us. And she thinks so too. She's pretty sure. Um, but she wasn't planning to get him neutered and, and keep him. So she was thrilled and came down and talked to me uh, right before Christmas. And, you know, I sent her a little note. and I, <laughs> I told her when she came in person, I hope I don't come across like a crazy stalker. But she said, oh no, I, I'm so excited. I'm so happy that he's going to have a permanent home and you know, we look out for him too, but, but, uh, you know, we've got a lot going on with our cats. And so we now know that Toby came from the same, I mean, Toby got fostered or guardianed over by the same people that had Willie, uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't them that released him not neutered and all that. No, it was the renters next door to them. And, and they're a little bit overwhelmed with their own cats. So anyway, we're, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, it's a small world, you know, and it's no wonder he reminds me of Willie because he's just kind and gentle and he, he's like real laid back like Willie was. So anyway, and Coco, I mean, Coco is not the forgotten. He is just the, the constant companion of, of Manuel and he still comes to my desk every morning and, you know, it's, it is a challenge. I want to make sure that no matter what, I'm giving him equal love, you know, and attention. So that is a challenge. That can be really hard because just the moment that you turn and see the look on his face, if I'm, you know, telling Toby that I love him, it's, and you know, of course, <laughs> we're doing treats together and, and uh, petting together and they're eating together and everything. And so, and, and they're in the bed together, you know, like uh, Coco likes to be at my feet and, and then, um, uh, Toby likes to be up at the top and Princess comes on the other side just to visit and then goes back to her climber at night. So, wow, <laughs> we are definitely a full, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're definitely uh, fully blessed. And so, uh, oh dear. I wanted to give you just a brief, just a tiny little update on my mom. It turns out she so far doesn't need surgery. Um, I got the call from the surgeon that they're recommending that it heal naturally. And uh, the hold up in finding out whether there'd be surgery was, I guess, rechecking with, with more x-rays after a few days because um, he, he was trying to explain that the shoulder was like a ice cream cone and then the ice cream. And as long as it's not uh, off center too much or, you know, it's not displaced, the, the fracture is right below so um, anyway, it, it is complex, but she doesn't have to have the surgery unless something changes. So that's a big blessing. And I really wanted to thank everybody for the, um, the prayers and all of the, the outpouring of comments and everything. That really meant a lot to me. It's hard to be distant you know, far away. It's hard to be on scene. It's, <laughs> it's just hard. Life is not easy sometimes, you know. Um, so I, I could never say it's harder to be further away because I know as a direct caregiver for my in-laws that it's hard to be in the emergency room too. And it's hard to, you know, see them in pain or, you know, uh, and, and, and like, I, I know from, well, and I've had surgery too myself, so I know it's terrible hard to feel helpless too. Like after my hysterectomy, I was just, oh my word, I was the one that was helping everyone. And all of a sudden, you know, I was out for at least three to four days. Then I could walk a little and then I could do a few things, but I couldn't even take the garbage out. So, you know, for like two weeks. So it's hard to be cared for. It's hard to, 
Anyway, <laughs> we don't want to go into 2024 with all this. So this is actually December uh, 31st, 2023. We're going to get all of that out and then we're going to have a better outlook for the new year. But, but it is good news. Um, you know, it, we all have enough challenges and that includes my mom without having to have major surgery. And so, um, everything the surgeon told me made sense. And, um, uh, it, it's just a blessing. That's all that, that, uh, and it's, it's hard enough because when you have to rely on a walker and you can't use it, then that's going to present other things. But I, I just, I didn't want to say too much. That's, you know, that's all I wanted to, to update you on for that. And then, um, I want to do a whole separate video about how I'm going to approach 2024. Um, but I thought, well, why not just start, you know, discussing it a little bit here? It doesn't hurt. And then I'll find a way of, um, you know, figuring out how it makes sense or which video, because I may not have time for <laughs> too many separate videos right now while I'm trying to, trying to do quite a bit. Um, in fact, Wednesday, we go to the vet with all three cats to get a booster for Toby and then annual shots for uh, Coco and Princess. And I've, I've never done that before. It was the person there that said, well, just bring them all, you know, and we'll just do it. And I was thinking, okay, um, I think we've got it figured out. Manuel will take uh, Coco in and I will take Toby and... Uh, Princess. Princess is like a lightweight. She probably weighs less than eight pounds. I'm sure she does. Toby weighs 13 and Coco weighs um, ex exactly 18 right now, which is probably going to land us in a world of trouble because we've been trying really hard to get his weight below 18. And it may be when he goes over there, but the little scale here, he's still kind of struggling with his weight and I'm trying to feed him separately. And actually Toby understands. Toby's got his little Everybody has their own little feeding station, but <laughs> it doesn't always, you know, and I don't mean I leave it out. I don't. I, I pick it back up as soon as they get done. And that, so we hear a lot of crying from Coco, like screeching, just screeching in front of the bowl. And it's like, my goodness, two hours ago you ate, you know. But um, to be honest, I've never had to do that before. He's the first one where I've had to pick up the food. Um, the cats I've had before just... You know, of course they would run out and they'd screech, but not, you know, I didn't have to worry about um, making it into separate meals like that as much. So now I lost my train of thought. Oh, yes, we're going to talk about um, a little bit about how I am thinking about the hobby in relationship to 2024, a new year, and, you know, how it fits into the rest of, of, uh, Oh, my life, basically. Uh, we had a big expense toward the end of the year. And all of our focus is going to be paying that bill completely and not paying a penny of interest. So serious, like really serious um, priority is going to be doing that. And so I'm not going to be buying stuff. But it wouldn't matter even if that wasn't the 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 case that just makes it a little easier because whenever there's a priority, I, I get it and I'm, you know, not going to mess up. But I also feel that I've been gifted so many things, pens, inks, notebooks, um, covers, stickers. I can't even, you know, that, um, just to really, really enjoy and, um, be a good uh, steward of the things because everything may not stay. You know, if a pen doesn't work out great, I will find it a new home so that um, it won't just be sitting in my pen case. And it's there's more of an emphasis on that right now. And in, in my heart and my mind, it's like, it, definitely. And that's why when the, the box of 30 pens came in and I saw the black euphoria, right away I thought of my friend. I thought, that's her color. Like, that's her color and and the pen is is so stunning you know the the green one the one that i have the what is it called um i have my i, I brought my little paper in case i would like get like this um <laughs> pink gaiva so that one with the green and the pink and the and the glitter well the black one didn't have as much glitter which suits my friend better and so it was like yay you know this is an example of how um 
you know, the, the intention of the person was to find great new home for the pens. And so I knew this was going to fulfill that too. So there's, that's just one example because there are more, but I think with new things coming in every month or every so often, I think that distracts me to the point, and many people probably could handle that, juggle all of that. But my brain, it just doesn't work that way to begin with. And then there are quite a few other projects, you know, and I say projects, like, you know, painting the house and assisting uh, one of my family members here, and then being a co-guardian for my mom, and really, you know, supporting Manuel, of course, and what he's doing for his health, and the cats, and you know, my reading and, you know, <laughs> but I think what I'm trying to say is hard. It's hard to get it out. It's like, I'm not trying to say, I know what I'm not trying to say. I'm not trying to say, don't ever give me anything again, anybody, please. You know, I'm, what I'm trying to say is the blessings are so like, there's so much here that I can go through 2024, um, you know, reviewing, uh, practicing with, trying out, learning about, that I know that I'm just like completely full, completely blessed. And so um, I'm realistic. I know that something new will, you know, will come into my life and I, I will probably be the one that, <laughs> that brings it in. Um, however, I know I'll be on a low span. There's no way around that. And, uh, you know, but if I want something bad enough, then I'll be learning how to sell or trade or whatever. I just, I haven't gotten into that up to this point, the seven years that I've been, um, you know, back in fountain pens, because everything does seem to, it seems like it takes me longer to make decisions, to organize, to make sure that I'm going to be able to, um, ensure that the item, if I'm going to trade or sell, it's got to be really, really good. And I, I worry more about doing that unless I'm absolutely confident that there's not anything wrong with it and that kind of thing. Or, um, so there, it can be a barrier. If a pen doesn't write good for me, I just don't want to pass it on to someone else unless they understand, well, this is a, a super fine line. Um, I find it scratchy, you know, and so that takes a lot of energy and time to, um, and I know I overcomplicate things. There's, there's no question about that. There's just no question. And I'm having to learn not to do that because when you're busy with several important things, you've got to be able to function without holding yourself up, writing an email, you know, and until it's perfect, for instance. And, and yet I don't want to be uh, what this, the word's not casual. The word would be, I guess, um, what's the word for not being careful or just being sloppy or just being, um, you know, well, anyway, I don't want to be doing poor <laughs> job at things either, but you can't just, you can't wait till things are perfect. So I'll be working on that too. But so I think that, um, I think it was 2018 maybe or 2019 when I was talking about having a depth a year, but I wasn't ready then. I wasn't fully understanding even, I think, what it meant, um, you know, where you, instead of expanding the things and the projects where you focus in and go deeper with what you already own is what basically uh, that idea is. And I think this just naturally already started. Um, it's not like, oh, January 1st, I'm going to start this. <clears throat> no, I've already started, <coughs> excuse me, to contemplate and to act um, differently toward things and, and try to go deeper with what I have. So, um, yeah, I don't know with me whether making notes makes a difference or not. It probably doesn't. Um, I have a good outlook, I think. I have a realistic outlook. I know I'm going to be busy. Um, I know that I wish that it wasn't winter so I could like maybe be in Vermont, um, be there to be more hands-on support and, and everything with my mom. But I think we have to deal with what is and things can change tomorrow too. So I, I, I have to realize that. And I think that, um, 
it's just really a blessing to have this fountain pen hobby and fountain pen friends and pen pals and subscribers and the comment section where we can talk because uh, it's the connections that are really, really important. And I think that we learn from each other and uh, I wouldn't know what to do without this channel. It doesn't matter whether I ever review another thing. I have that um, desire to connect with other people that love fountain pens and inks and books and journals and cats, you know, like <laughs> I don't really lack for subjects as far as if I, if I ever couldn't come on and talk about uh, pens, I guess it would be cats. But um, our books are all of the above. I finished um, East of Eden, and that was a big 600-page book, and it was good. It was really interesting. Wasn't I don't mean that everything in it was happy because it had some intensity, but it was so well written and so good. I couldn't believe what I'd missed, you know. <coughs> Excuse me. So now I'm on to reading um, Far From the Mat Matting Crowd by Thomas Hardy, and I I admit like. Right at this point, um, having trouble focusing on reading anything, basically. I, I, I picked up in between, after I finished e East of Eden, I read like some little uh, paperback called Christmas with a Cowboy. And it was really sweet. It was good. It wasn't, you know, raunchy or anything. It was a really good story about a young lady from Ireland who uh, met, met someone over in Ireland, but then he was a Texas um, rancher or something. And... And by a, a really interesting circumstance, she ends up coming to take care of his grandmother, doesn't know that, that it's his grandmother. And it's, it's a sweet story. And uh, that, that was really good and easy to read, but I was almost finished with it when I got the news that my mom had taken the fall and broken her arm. So um, we'll see how my reading goes. But, <coughs> but it's a big part of my life, unwinding in the evening with a good book. So... <laughs> I don't do as well unwinding with a movie or anything with a screen. So that just doesn't work well. In fact, if I can't read, then traditionally what I would do is either color in a coloring book or, you know, with, with pens or with uh, colored pencils or um, just write in my journal and then pick a topic to think about that's, you know, positive or something. <laughs> and then I'd fall asleep. So, Okay. I'm sure this is more than enough, but I wanted to, I wanted to give something for everybody. I mean, here we are, and uh, I did what I always do. I picked eight pens and eight inks because that's kind of how I like to do it, and um, I can, I consider them completely fresh and new to me to write the letters with and to do, uh, you know, journaling with. And then when I come back and do the report, I'll be completely transparent about how many pens I have inked up and what I've got going on for the Hobonichi and for the bullet journal and anything else that I decided to ink up because it's going to happen. Oh, and I've got, I think I've got a couple dozen Birmingham inks that I'm going to be kind of treating sort of the way I did the ink vent, um, not doing a daily post on Instagram because then I will be putting pressure on myself. But I will, I actually have a, a new Hobonichi notebook that was gifted from um, pen friend RL and I'm going to put the inks in that. And I'm just finishing that, that larger um, Bond Travel Gear 68 GSM. But this one is a Hobonichi notebook and it's uh, 52 GSM Tomoe River paper. So I am pleased because I think I need a lot of small, happy projects going on. And uh, the lack of pressure, because, you know, I'm just approaching them all differently and not pressuring myself. Um, because some days there won't be anything more than emails, phone calls, you know, research and things like that. Um, that I do not just as a guardian, but as a, a daughter. So, and we will, we will get to the next level and we will get mom back to her um, assisted living and, uh, and things, you know, things will go on and, and hopefully very positively. So that's the next set of, of prayer and hope is that she can get back to her assisted living in a, in a couple of weeks, you know, as the doctor um, expects. So... Thank you all very much for listening. If you made it this far, uh, this is uh, 
Another thing is I've been choosing the brighter colors because this one is orange. Um, I love hoodies. All of a sudden I'm just, since I started being more sensitive to the cold, I get happy this time of year because I have an excuse to wear these hoodies. Uh, but this one, I'll tell you, I'll just tell you one more story before I go. Uh, this is a Carhartt hoodie. And I do own one other Carhartt hoodie. And I was with Mano when he bought it for me. And I almost died because of the price. I thought I said, oh my, oh no, no, please don't buy that. It's too expensive. I said, no, because I buy almost all my clothes in thrift stores. I, I get really good quality ones, but I don't like to pay full price for clothes. I mean, other than underwear and socks. Anyway, this was free. It is in pristine condition. It's a medium. I guess, I don't know. I guess it's a men's medium. But I was with my aunt in May and we were going uh, back to her house and she pulled right over. She said, oh, she's got clothes out. And I didn't know what she meant. And she jumped out and she said, come on, you got to look and see what she put in there. Well, there's a lady that lives in this town that puts out a great big plastic tub like a Rubbermaid bin with clothes uh, that are, were her teenagers clothes and her dresses things that she's done with even maybe a purse or whatever she wants to get rid of and the campers uh, and the people that live in around get to know that she does this and it's free you know it's, it's a free cycle I guess you know <laughs> informal and uh, I thought well, I'm not likely to find anything that fits me because I'm still thinking about being a larger size. Anyway, um, my aunt found a dress and I pulled this out and, <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's probably huge or it's probably too small. And I looked and it said medium and I put it up and I said, do you think it'll fit me? And she said, yeah, I think it will. And so anyway, I love this shirt because it was free and it's a bright, pretty color. And, and it's like, it's a Carhartt, you know, uh, really warm but somehow they get it right. Like, you know, I don't feel uh, super, super stifling hot in it or anything. So <laughs> how we got from fountain pens and inks <laughs> and cats to a free sweatshirt, I don't know. But I just got the sweetest email from one of my pen friends that, that said that they just love to hear the chatty videos. And I thought, oh no, I don't have time to make two videos. So I just put everything in one. So hopefully, uh, hopefully, I mean, this whole channel for me now, you know, is about just contributing and whatever that is, whether it's a smile or an inspiration or a needed piece of information about a fountain pen or an ink, whatever it happens to be, cause I don't always know what, you know, uh, what people get from my videos, but that's what it's all about. And then I, I enjoy the conversations and the connections that we make in the comments. So happy new year. Uh, 2024 is almost here as I'm speaking and it'll be here when you're watching this most likely most, most everybody that watches it. Cause, uh, I'll put it up and I need to end it now. Cause I don't know how long this will take to upload. So, I will see you in the next video and thank you, thank you, thank you for all your support uh, throughout the year, um, comments, your s subscribing, your watching and viewing, your prayers for my mom. I mean, this is a, the best community there is. Um, and I'm talking about the, the umbrella, the large fountain pen community. We are cool people. We have cats, we have dogs, we have fountain pens, and we have a lot of a lot of really, um, the hobby helps with life is the way I feel. And I know, I know other people, my loved ones have different hobbies, but I can feel their excitement about their hobbies and their uh, sports and things like that. So I know that, that it's not actually all that weird. It's just different. You know, it's just a different hobby than someone else. So see you on the next one. And I cheered myself up. I don't think you can that's priceless, right? I mean, full disclosure, I was really down just about 30 minutes before I started this. And I wasn't sure my eyes were going to look, <laughs> you know, good enough. But that's life, you know. So I'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.